welcome to this review of The Mummy Returns. Not only do you get me talking about the film, you also get the guest star that is not only my friend, but he is also my favourite movie reviewer, Mike from Real School. Hey Leah, it's an absolute pleasure once again doing a video with you. It's been way too long since we've done one together, so let's get to it. Let's talk about the severely underrated The Mummy Returns. When I was young, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. It's popcorn fun. And speaking of popcorn, I remember in one scene, I got so scared by a jump scare that I threw my popcorn in the air, but managed to catch it. It was like something out of a film. And I don't think I ev will ever manage to do that again. <laughs> it was quite epic looking back. You know, at 13, I found it a fun movie. And I would go as far as saying it's still a fun movie, but you can see it for what it is. I think I've just always found it so watchable because of my devotion to the first film and for my love of Egyptian mythology. I actually wanted to discuss how The Mummy Returns was actually at the crux of two generations of action movies. The New School, which was The Matrix in 1999 when it was released, where everything was CG, where everything was that kind of slow motion action sequence, and the old school 80s and 90s action flicks. The Mummy also represented something that was extremely old school, and that is, it's clearly inspired by the old school serials of the 1930s and 40s, which actually inspired other awesome action movies like Indiana Jones, George Lucas, and some other filmmakers were obviously clearly inspired by these mystery shorts that opened before films and they kind of liked how those heroes were old school, charming and swashbuckling kind of heroes. And that leads me to Brendan Fraser, one of the best Canadians out there. Okay, he was at one point, but you know what? I really like him because he did have the peak of his career in the 90s, and I think these movies were probably the best he had to offer. And he represents that old school kind of rogue archetype. He's charming, he's roguish, he's kind of dangerous, he's kind of mysterious, all the ladies love him. He was in amazing shape and he's a good looking guy. And you know what? I really loved him as O'Connell. And I think he really made these films. I completely agree. I absolutely love and adore Brendan Fraser. Growing up in the 90s meant he was always there because he had so many films out then, but he was the perfect leading man. He had it all, charming, handsome, wit, I love him in the Mummy franchise and it's just so nice to hear someone else complimenting him because I think a lot of people are too hard on him. Uh, but yeah, essentially, you've got it spot on about that rogueness. He, he really was the perfect leading man. But we're not here to talk about Canada's national treasure, Brendan Fraser. We're here to talk about my cousin Dwayne. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who actually made his debut in The Mummy Returns as a big movie star. His only real acting experience other than WWE came in Star Trek Voyager where it was just a guest role. I really am grateful for The Mummy Returns because what I didn't know then, but I do know now, is it gave Dwayne Johnson a platform into feature film. and. Back then, I wasn't too bothered about this man, I'll admit, hands up, I was never into wrestling and I was just like, oh, this is another wrestler dude go making his way into films and blah 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 blah, but now I'm so grateful for it because what world would we be living in without Dwayne Johnson? The Mummy Returns was perfect for Dwayne The Rock Johnson because this was his first major motion picture. But you know what? In hindsight, he's a very intelligent guy. He used to write a lot of his bits when it came to the WWE. He was always one of the wittiest, one of the funniest, and one of the most intelligent. And you can actually tell that as his roles get slightly more and more developed. But I say Mummy Returns was perfect for him because it's actually akin to another former WWE wrestler who's made it big as a movie star, Dave Bautista. They're not the greatest actors. They're there just to be a presence. So you know what? Less is more in both of their cases. And in The Mummy Returns, Dwayne doesn't say pretty much anything in the movie. He's just there. And you know what? He's enough of a present. Some of the effects are incredibly impressive for the time that it was. This was 2001. But then there are moments where they have just clearly taken way too much time on one thing and the rest of it just looks completely shoddy. 
even more so when you do compare it to the original. The CGI of the Scorpion King is quite special in particular. It's certainly up there. The effects look like you were playing a PlayStation 2 game. Or a Justice League villain. But it was 2001. Things got a lot better, but even in 2001, a lot of people laughed at how bad that CG was. You get right to the end of the movie with good effects, and then you're just presented with that. And of course it's going to stand out, and of course you're going to laugh, because there is just such a huge contrast. This sequel is recycling a lot from the first movie, and it also is just way too convenient when it comes to the writing and the story. Suddenly, with no mention in the first film about this, our main characters are suddenly connected to Egypt's past, ancient Egypt, the mythology and that. Suddenly our characters are involved in all that and it's a bit too convenient. Insert the people's eyebrow here. I tried, I tried to do it, but my eyebrows are just like connected all the way, I can't, I can't isolate. I think with The Mummy Returns, there is a kind of respect there for it. It's, it's an enjoyable film, but at the same time, you can recognize its flaws, but you don't have to hate on that, you just, almost forgive the film for that and move on and you will find yourself watching it for the millionth time when it's on TV. I know I do anyway. It's certainly not a strong sequel but I can certainly point out that it is a masterpiece when you consider the third in the franchise. Thank you for joining me Mike with The Mummy Returns. It's been an absolute pleasure. I always love it when we collaborate. Thanks again Leah. This was an absolute blast. I hope we can do another video together. I hope all of you go check out The Mummy Returns if you've never seen it before. It's way better than that Tom Cruise mummy even with the the CG and while you're at it Check out all of Leah's awesome videos. You can go check out Mike over at Real School. I will put the link in the description box below. And now it's your time to talk. Put your thoughts and feelings in the comment box below of what you think of The Mummy Returns. Don't forget to subscribe to myself and to Mike over at Real School. And please do like the video. Thanks for watching.